Hi there. Welcome back. Before we continue, a quick introduction of myself. My name is Kishore and I'm your instructor for this course. In my career span, I have worn multiple caps, that of a developer, consultant and of an architect. I am a certified open group architect and also a TOGAF certified. Please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Currently living in Singapore and in my current role, I am helping a large Asian bank with their digital transformation journey. With this course, I like to share my experience and knowledge in software architecture modeling space. And hopefully with this course, you could be a better and a successful software architect. So the first question you may be wondering is what's the purpose of this modeling and why do we need to create this architecture diagram? Though we have seen challenges of modeling in software industry compared to other industry like construction or electrical in previous session, there are quite a few number of good reasons as why we should model. For a software architect, model is a way to communicate to audience and stakeholders as what we have built till now and what we are going to build. If it's done correctly, model will give shape to the abstraction or abstract requirement. Sometimes client instead of providing a detailed requirement may just say we need a new application or system that should exactly behave like another existing system. Now in this case the requirement is quite abstract and there is not much detail in the requirement and what does the client actually means when he says that he need to build a system similar to an existing system is he referring to look and feel should be the same functionality should be the same or is he referring to the nfr or non functional requirement to be the same so in these cases where this is an abstraction of requirement and where the requirements are not clear modeling helps Once you start modeling and start building various model diagrams and start communicating with correct audiences you will have more clarity to the client requirement with modeling big complex problem can be broken into small manageable chunks it's a good tool to identify nfa or non functional requirement we'll talk about nfas later in the course Models and software architecture diagram is an excellent tool to be used during KT or knowledge transfer session. It's also an apt tool to be used during onboarding session for new joinees. So who are you drawing this diagram for? Who are the audiences? So as an architect, you model and draw a diagram for various stakeholders. Now, who are the stakeholders? So the stakeholders range from non-technical people like CEO, CIO, CXO, marketing heads, product owners, PR to technical people like developers, DevOps, middleware, development team, team lead and so on. In a typical software implementation, you as an architect deal with different hierarchy of people, right from developer to CEO of an organization. So you will interact with lots of different types of audiences with different levels of technical knowledge. So when you create different diagrams and model you need to consider the viewpoint of these different audiences into account say for example if you have developed a super complex architecture diagram and you are feeling super proud of the diagram as you have spent hours and hours in building them but if you are showing this diagram to a business leader to an executive leader to a to a ceo or cio of an organization who are typically less technically inclined maybe his expression will be something like what you see on the screen he will be confused it's very important that architecture diagram we model communicates the context information to the correct set of audiences most of this diagram follow uml standard and as an architect you model using uml now for those who are not aware of what is a uml diagram uml which stands for unified modeling language is a standard language for specifying visualizing constructing and documenting the artifacts of a software system as you probably are aware there's no shortage of uml diagram out there if you look at the wiki link as shown on the screen you will see there are dozens and dozens of diagram that can be created using uml so the question is do we really need to draw all this diagram in the software development project and the answer is no 
there are a couple of handful diagrams which plays important roles and have proven time and again in various software project for example system context component deployment diagram and handful of others which has to be part of your uml deliverables but not all so as a software architect as part of modeling exercise it's very important to select right diagram which brings value to the project and that's one of the aspect that we'll be looking in this course thank you